question. Did you just pay all your collections on your credit report? Well, I got some good news for you, and I got some bad news for you. The good news is, hey, you just paid off your debt. The bad news is, it's still going to report on your credit report for the next 7 to 10 years. But don't worry, I got you. You don't got to wait 7 to 10 years. I'm going to show you an easy and effective way to knock some things off. So sit back, relax, grab a pen, get some paper, get something to drink. We're going to get straight into it. I want to clear things up. I want you to understand this first. I want you to understand the argument that we're going to present to the credit bureaus, all right? So whenever a consumer reporting agency prepares a consumer report, it shall follow reasonable procedure to ensure maximum possible accuracy of the information concerning the individual about whom the report relates, all right? So our argument is based off of the report is supposed to ensure maximum possible accuracy. And when you look at your consumer report, you're going to see, I'm going to show you an example. You're going to see that your credit report is not showing maximum possible accuracy, all right? So this is going to be our argument that we present in to expand TransUnion and Equifax. This is the reason why you can remove anything from your credit report based off of this law. Now, does it happen? You already know it doesn't. However, we miss 100 shots we don't take, all right? So basically, what I'm going to do is walk you through the process of how to leverage this law and other laws to remove some accounts from your credit report, all right? Now, first things first, you want to get your report, all right? So go to Identity IQ. The link is in the description. The reason why you want to go here is because it shows a tri-merge report where you can see everything lined up like you see here. And based off of this information, you can leverage this information to remove an account from your credit report, all right? Whether it's paid, open, whatever the case may be, you can leverage that law and the information that you see on the report, okay? So this is very important for you to do. So once you have your report, you want to identify all those collections, those paid collections, because that's what we're talking about, those paid collections on your report. Now, you already paid it off. However, I'm pretty... I'm pretty sure if you look at the date open, it's going to be inconsistent, all right? And I'm pretty sure if you look at last reported, it's going to be inconsistent. And if you scroll down and you look at date last active, look at it. It's not consistent, okay? Date of last payment, not consistent. And then look at this, like the history. Look at that. Not consistent on the report, all right? So you're going to be able to leverage this information to remove an account like i said it's not 100 percent guarantee however you can see the information and you can use that argument basis based off of this information so the first thing would um that we instruct is you want to first clean up your personal information the reason why is because you probably have information that's reporting correctly when it comes to your personal information but you also want to make sure that a hey, you're removing these um different addresses off your report all right now the first thing you want to do is you know create a letter i'll have the letter for you but just you know put this and how you get your information to see if it's reported incorrectly you want to go to experian.com all right when you go to experian.com and create a uh, free account it's going to allow you to go through the experience um acting like you're about to dispute online and what you're going to see is inconsistent information on your personal information your address you're going to see different variations of your your name you're going to see different variations of your address you're going to see different variations of your phone number and if you have a spouse and you're no longer with that spouse or if you um have like a co-applicant you're going to see a lot of stuff you're also going to see your job history that's probably incorrect you just want to update and just have one name one address one phone number one job history, all right? The reason why you want to have that is because let's just say you apply for something and the lender looks at your report. You want to show them that you're lendable, okay? So that's the reason why you just want to have your information correct, all right? Now, you want to send this letter certified and two forms of identification to Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax, all right? I'm pretty sure your personal information is messed up on Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. So you just want to update it and have it correct, all right? Now, after you do that, the next thing you're going to do is, of course, you're going to send off your next letter, okay? Now, this letter is based off of the law, all right? It's very simple and it's straight to the point, okay? So this letter is just, I call it this secret letter. I just made a name for it. However, it's basically the reinvestigation letter, all right? The reinvestigation letter is asking, experience. 
TransUnion or Equifax to reinvestigate the completeness and accuracy of the accounts. All right. Now, it's Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax's job to assure maximum possible accuracy. All right. It's not our job. I'm not disputing and telling them to update the um, date open day last payment it's their job to make sure everything is complete and accurate it's not my job all right so this is how we're going to leverage the letter based off of what we know all right based off of our argument so first and foremost what you want to do is i'll have this letter for you but first and foremost what you want to do is to whom it concerns all right i just recently looked at my report i wanted to make sure that everything is 100 percent correct and accurate can you reinvestigate the accounts listed below all right so you can also put that collection that paid collections name right here the account number you don't need the full account number it's okay for it to be one two three four x x x star 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 whatever the case may be and what you're telling them to do is real clear instructions reinvestigate the completeness of every piece of information and if it's not accurate, please remove it from my credit report. All right. It's just that simple. All right. Now you can put the paid collections right here, but you can also put the other negative accounts on your credit report. All right. Charge jobs, whatever you have on your credit report, you can also list the negative accounts on here as well. All right. Now, once you do that, I highly suggest you go get it notarized. I'll have this part right here where you can go get it notarized. Here's why. Experience, TransUnion, and Equifax like to play crazy. How do they like to play crazy? They like to say that, hey, you sound like a credit repair company. This isn't you. All right. So to save time, because I know your time is valuable, go get it notarized because now they can't play crazy. All right. Now, um, you can get it notarized at UPS, the bank, certain places. You can look it up, Google it, um, a place near you, see where you get it notarized. All right, once you get it notarized, um, make sure you send it to Expand TransUnion and Equifax. Add two forms of identification. Now, one more thing I forgot to tell you. If the collection, the paid collection, is only on Experian, we're going to only send a letter to Experian. If it's only on TransUnion, just only send a letter to TransUnion. If it's only on Equifax, send it to Equifax, all right? Or vice versa, whatever the case may be. If it's only on two out of the three, just only send it to the place that is actually on. All right. Now, once you send a letter certified at two forms of identification, you must wait 35 days. All right. 35 days, 30 days for them to complete the investigation, five days for them to send you back the investigation. All right. They have 30 days to complete the investigation and they have five days to send it back to you. All right. So 35 days. That's the reason why tracking is very important not 35 days from the time you send it 35 days from the time they receive it all right so you just gotta count then and just wait now once you receive your investigation back and some of your accounts came back verified some of those paid collections came back verified you might got a few of them removed from your report the next letter you want to send is this letter right here okay this letter is very important that you want to send so here's the letter right here and what we're doing is everything according to the law. You can go read it yourself if you want to. However, it's kind of right here, um, broken it down. All right, so who are we talking to? Are we talking to TransUnion, Experian, Equifax? Which one of them uh, basically verified our accounts? So they either verify, update, quote unquote, modify, whatever the case may be on the investigation letter, it's kind of all the same. So if they say they verified or update or modify the account, everything is complete and accurate. Here's the next letter you want to send. All right. So I'm writing to request a detailed description of the process followed by your agency regarding the disputed accounts on my credit report. All right. Pursuant to the Fair Credit Reporting Act, 18 U.S.C. 1681 I-7. Under this section, the credit report agencies are obligated to provide a description of the investigation within 15 days of receiving a consumer's dispute. All right. So we want to list the account name and account number that was verified and then ask them to provide the description of the procedure of the investigation used to verify the accounts. If you can't delete this account immediately. All right. Very clear instructions. Like I said before, go get it notarized and then two forms of identification and wait 
And you, as you can see, they have 15 days. All right. Now, if somehow your accounts don't come off, next, what you want to do is file a complaint with the CFPB. Yes, I'm going to walk you through that process of what it looks like. All right. So first things first, what you want to do is click on credit reported. Okay. Very important. You want to click on credit reported and then scroll all the way down to the bottom and click on credit reporting again. Okay. Very important. Now, next thing you want to do is look for the specific complaint. What we're we talking about problem with companies investigation into existing problem. All right. Was not notified. The investigation did not fix an error on your report. Have you already tried to fix this problem with this company? Yes. Did you request no? And then next. All right. Very important. Now, if you don't have an account with them, all you got to do is just Google. And then once you Google uh, CFPB, it'll allow you to click on submit a complaint and then you'll be able to create an account. And then once you're in the back end, like once you have your account, verify your email. Once you're in the back end, then you'll click at the right hand, like right the top right hand corner. Click on start new complaint. Now you're going to be on a screen that looks similar to this once you go through everything. And then we're not going to come up with something. I'm going to challenge you to go to chat GPT and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about to actually create your complaint because you already know chat GPT AI. Hey, they do things like, of course we do things so that, you know, it just makes it much easier and simpler based off of, you know, information. All right. So here's how we're going to leverage um, chat GPT. All right. Now I already created something. Now it's going to be totally different from yours because, you know, when you sent your letter out and a different type of accounts, but I'll, ha I'll have this example for you, but this is just an example based off of like what we did and the laws that they violated. All right. So I'm not going to read all of this, but I just want to show you an example of what, what happened. Okay. So I sent the letter to Experian on February 1st, 2024, asking them to investigate the completeness and accuracy of these accounts. All right. And these are just an example of the accounts, but they said everything is accurate. I looked at my updated report and noticed they didn't modify or update anything. That's a violation of this law. And then I basically showed them all the laws that they violated. And then according to this, I said this, and then I also said, I sent the letter asking them to provide me a description of how they verify the accounts. All right. And then I just basically broke down the law that they violated. And then I asked them, can you also create a CFEB complaint based off the laws on these, on the laws they violated? And then all you want to do is just click on submit and then chat GPT is going to come up with something. Now, usually they come up with a letter. Now we're not going to use the actual letter. We just going to leverage with the information that's within the letter and then grab that and then put in our complaint. All right. So let's just see what it came up with. So subject. Doo -doo. All right. So I'm writing. I'm typing. I'm writing to file a formal complaint against Experian for violations of the Fair Credit Reporting Act. On February 1st, I sent the letter to Experian requesting an investigation into the completeness and accuracy of the following accounts. One, two, three, four, all the accounts, right? Despite my request for the investigation, Experian failed to approach action as mandated by the FCR. Specifically, Experian neglected to comply with the following provisions, all right? Here are the provisions that they failed to. And then in light of these violations, I'm seeking following remedies. Now, this isn't 100% guarantee. Basically, I'm just going to show you how to leverage this. All right. So what we want to do is copy all this and then go to our complaint, right? And then put it in. All right. So we're just going to copy what they said, look over it, make sure everything is correct. All right. Now what you want to do is now what you want to do is look down to the bottom and say what would be a fair resolution to this issue all right so the fair resolution to this issue is for in light of these violations i'm seeking the following remedies prompt delete or modification of inaccurate credit file now we're not going to modify a hey, this right here so this is very important to look at it All right, notification to the furniture and accurate information regarding the modifications made to my credit file, a detailed description of the reinvestigation procedure and a closed copy. So let's just um, remove all this. Okay. And then this is what we want. Prompt deletion from my credit file. 
I also enclose copies of all relevant corresponding documentation related to this matter for review. All right. Now, what you want to do is just, you know, attach the letters that you sent and everything that you sent. Okay. And then now what we want to do is just click on next. Okay. Since we already uh, put everything that we need. Now, who are we talking to? Now, for an example, we, uh, we was talking to Experian, but you can also if you want to talk to other credit bureaus, right? You want to create three separate complaints, all right? The reason why is because, like I said earlier, expand TransUnion and Equifax, right? Your collection might not be on all three credit reports. So you will only want to complain to the people that have those accounts that you listed on your report, all right? Now, click on social, name as a pair, date of birth, and then fill out that information, okay? Um, date of birth. Fill out this information so they can clearly find you uh, when you submit this complaint do you want to complain with another company no then click on next so after you click on next all you want to do is just review all your information make sure everything is correct your first name last name review everything and then click on submit now after you click on submit usually what happens is the cfpb will respond to you within 15 days but Expand TransUnion or Equifax might ask for an additional 60 days, all right? Now, it doesn't usually take 60 days. It usually takes about 30 days for them to do a complete investigation, all right? So just be patient. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.